Hello everybody, welcome to a, another episode of Total Obvious Comedy, or TOC. Um, yeah, whatever you want to call us, TOC. I'm, I'm going to go with TOC from now on, because it makes it sound a bit more sleek that way. It sounds like some nice little clothes brand. You know, oh, I'm wearing a TOC, or check out my TOC's brother. So that way, um, yeah, it just sounds a little bit better. <laughs> so yeah, so welcome to TOC. I'm your host, Taryn Chelly, and I hope you're all having a great day. I don't know if you can actually hear this, there's a lot of rain, because the room that I'm in, there's actually a sunroof, it's not a proper roof, it's, it's got a window, um, it's like a, I don't know what it's called, is it a skylight, I don't know, I think it's a sunlight or something, sunlight, it's a window, it's a window on the ceiling, that's what it is, it's basically a window on the ceiling, so when, the problem is, when the rain hits, it's really loud, so if you can hear the rain, just bear with me on that, <laughs> I, I've not got the best equipment, so I'm just making do with what I've got here. But anyway, how are we all doing? It's been a very eventful couple of weeks, hasn't it? Let's let's be honest. We we can't hide away from what's been happening in the news. I am, um, but I thought it. What what has been happening? Because there's. I was um on Saturday. I went to a protest in Leicester. Cause that's where I'm from. You know, Leicester, represent. And it was Black Lives Matter about George Floyd. And it was a very poignant, very moving protest. There was no issues or anything. There was no um, violence or anything like that. But it it does pose a lot of questions because I... Now, those of you who are listening are going to be like, OK. But those of you watching, you can see I am what you call an ethnic minority. I am of British Asian descent. Hello. How do you do? Welcome. Take a seat. Yes, and my, uh, my granddad came here in the, in the 50s, and his route to here was quite interesting. Now, I think about it, he started off, well, actually, he was actually quite anti-British to begin with. He was part of something in India called the Indian National Army, because he was born during British rule of India and everything. And then they fought for British independence. But after um, the Second World War, after many movements in British independence, well, no, sorry, Indian independence, they didn't watch British independence, they Indian independence. After they did that, the British left. Of course, they divided the Punjab before they left. They created Pakistan, and then a lot of them lost their lives, and a lot of them lost their homes. My granddad then, uh, he came, my granddad actually came here in the 50s, and then he set up a shop here, but he turned up, he was a Sikh guy, you know, turban, beard, and everything, but... In those days, he had to actually cut his hair and shave his beard just to get a job. That was the best he could do in that time. You know, it's, uh, now, obviously, you can look however you want to. But in those days, in the 50s, he had to do that in order just to earn a living. And my mum's family, they came in the late 60s. My, because my granddad was on, and what granddad I'm talking about is actually on my dad's family. So my dad's family um, came and stationed themselves in Nottingham in um, in the UK. My mum's family, theirs was more intertwined with, if we're going to talk about racism, because that's, let's face it, we're going to talk about that today. Um, my mum's family was a lot more intertwined with that. And that's because the, my mum grew up in a part of London, well, it's, I say, they say it's London, it's actually Middlesex, but we, we'll just go with it, it's called Southall, and those of you who don't know what Southall is, it is like, they call it Little India, it's full of immigrants, it's just literally brand people everywhere, so <laughs> they live there, and in the 70s, there was a lot of racism, National Front were very, very big at that point in time, and they were pushing the Asian community at that time to their limit and really just giving them a lot of shit. Basically, like, you know, like, you know, keep them out, get them out, keep them out. You know, I oh, don't want to eat chicken, take a miss You know, just, get, just saying we don't want these people here, you know. But, um, and then uh, there was a huge moment in South Hall history in 1979 a young Sikh boy I, his name passes me it's so bad that I don't know his name but he was killed by the National Front and then the community turned around and said you know what fuck that we're not going to stand for this anymore 
So the community, and the community at the time was predominantly Punjabis who'd come over here, and they literally turned around and said, no, we're going to tell this National Front to go fuck themselves. So they did. They, they started, and if you, actually, you can actually Google this, it's called the Southall Riots. And they, they pushed the National Front out of Southall, and they fought against the police, because they felt the police were actually siding with the National Front. And the, they ha and the NF had a, um, a pub. I think it was called the Hamburger Pub or something. And the Asians went and burnt it down. <laughs> they just thought, fuck it, we're going to burn it down. And then, as a result of that, there's been no racial incidents in South Wales. Well, there might have been some, but not to a huge extent um, ever since. Because the community said, fuck that, we're not going to stand for this shit anymore. And they turned on the racists. And that is actually very much what we're seeing today. The... Um, George Floyd was a African American, a um, and a black man who, let's face it, in if we go for the past many many years in America, there has always been a issue with the police and black people, specifically black men. They've been targeted a lot by the police, and again, you're pushing the community and pushing them and pushing them and pushing them, and at this point. You, they pushed the community so far that they said, you know what, fuck that, we are not going to put up for that shit anymore. So they literally turned on them, and that's why now we're getting these protests. The looting I don't agree with, and partly because it's bad, and partly because I'm just too much of a pussy to actually do it myself. <laughs> I'd love a new pair of trainers, but I ain't got the balls to go get them. So they, um, but that part of it shouldn't be happening. But the... The protests themselves are very just. Now, let's talk about what has been going on with the protests. One thing a lot of people were against was because this, it couldn't have happened at a worse time in human history right now. It's happening during the biggest pandemic in all most of people's lifetimes. You know, the coronavirus. It's happening during the biggest pandemic ever. And the fact I've said that, I'm probably going to get demonetized for just saying that word. But a lot of people were saying, do not go and uh, protest because you are having the, the risk of the spread of infection is going to go higher because of all the people protesting. That's what a lot of people were saying. I even got a lot of criticism myself from people. But the thing is, though, the way the protesters looked at it was... The issue of racism outweighs the issue of a pandemic because the issue of the pandemic has been going on for three, four months. The issue of racism has been going on for three, four hundred years. So it's it outweighs it in that sense. And I've actually written notes today. <laughs> I don't usually write notes when I have podcasts. I just kind of wing it. But I thought I'd write some notes today and see if we actually get through something right here. Um, I mean, I've got through a few things already. I've actually jumped the list. <laughs> I wasn't meant to mention my granddad until really later on, but I've just mentioned him already, so sorry. We're, just, we're going rogue! We are going rogue. But, well, where was we going? But now, as a result of this, they, there was a, um, because of the protests, there was, I know a lot of you probably saw this, in Bristol, there was a, a statue of Edward Colston and I I'm gonna be honest I didn't really know who Edward Colston was before this but he was quite prominent in Bristol uh, back in the day and he was known as one of the major guys when it came to the slave trade he built a lot of the things his wealth and a lot of things in Bristol today due to slavery and it's it's a shame but it's a truth. The truth hurts in many ways. It's it's a sad truth, but it's the truth. And so the the protesters brought down this statue of Edward Colston and threw him in the river. Because they thought, fuck that guy, that's a horrible piece of history, let's get rid of him. And to be fair, okay, you can see it's justified because he was a dick. He was a slave owner. There's no two ways about it. The guy owned slaves. Okay, he is <laughs> that's his history. He's a slave owner. So get rid of him. But now they're like talking about um, getting rid of every racist um, 
figure in British history. And that's going to be very difficult, and it's going to sound harsh, but that's going to be a very difficult thing to do because most of them were pretty racist. <laughs> Back in the day, they were, you know, Churchill was a, I'm going to get some hate for this, but Churchill was a massive racist. He was a huge racist. He hated Indians. He thought they were scum. I mean, we are quite annoying, but he thought we were scum. And he was just, he was a huge, he's the reason why four, I think four million people in Bengal died due to this guy being so racist. And, but he beat the Nazis, so we let him off. I mean, they don't mention it in Darkest Hour. You know, I've seen Darkest Hour. They don't mention once Churchill's racism. You know, he, there's, a, there's this one clip in Darkest Hour where he, and, it, and apparently this ain't true. This never happened. He goes on the tube and he meets a load of people and he's like, Churchill, like, I'm Churchill. Ah. And he's talking to all these people. And one of the guys there is a black guy. And Churchill's like really nice to the black guy. Go, hello, how are you? But in reality, Churchill would be like, who the fuck are you talking to? Get out of my way. <laughs> that's, that's what it would have really been like. But they can't put that in the film. Can't have racist Churchill. But if, so if that's why, if you go to like some parts of the world, they actually don't look at Churchill in the best light. But he fought the Nazis and he's seen as a British hero. So, and even Sadiq Khan said they're not going to get rid of Churchill's statue. And there's, um, I think Francis Drake is another one they're talking about. Is it Francis Drake? Yeah, who fought the Spanish Armada. He was also a racist, but he fought the Spanish. He fought an invasion, so they let him off. But it's, um, where do you draw the line of what's a racist and what's a national figure? If we look back, say, to Richard the Lionheart, he fought during the Crusades, you know, the Christian um, Crusade of Jerusalem. So he would have been racist, really, towards Muslims. And he would have seen Muslims as the enemy because, in reality, they were the enemy to him. He did see Muslims as the enemy because he was trying to take back the Holy Land. Muslims controlled the, the Holy Land. They were the enemy to him. So it's putting it into what is the actual historical context, of context there. Back in medieval time, they referred to a majority of black people as a Moor because they saw Moor came from the word Moorish, and Moorish people fought in the crew um, in the Middle East against the Crusaders. So that's where it's like. So where do we draw the line there? You know, it's you know Alfred the Great. He probably was a racist as well. <laughs> so it's it's all of it. But then we're going to go down that road. I'm going to get some hate from my Indian brothers here, but Gandhi was a massive racist as well. They, they were all bad in their own way. You know, so it's, where do you draw the line on that? So you can tear down these statues, but a lot of them were pretty bad. A lot of them were underlying racists. The British Empire was built on feeling that you were better than someone else and trade and other things as well. A lot of people, a lot of people say that the British Empire was just built on racism. No, it wasn't just built on that. There was a lot of things that went into it as well, too. So I'm going to be a bit fair on it there. But race did play a big part in it. But that's, it's like, that's the thing. Where do you draw the line in that? And I'm Asian. So I just look at it like, well, the, they don't... I mean, it's a very difficult position to be in because we, when I was at school, we didn't really learn a lot of the atrocities in British history and you know they're trying to now get some change the curriculum so they teach more about the atrocities of the British Empire but it's who's going to want to teach it you know I mean they we have this expectation that in Germany they're going to teach in Germany that they will teach about the evils of Nazism of National Socialism how evil Hitler was but we don't have this expectation that we will teach what's so bad about our own history. You know, the Nazi, um, you know, the Third Reich ended in 1945. India didn't get independence till 1947. Hong Kong didn't get independence till the 90s, 1990s. The British Empire outlasted a lot longer. So, they so British occupation of foreign countries has lasted longer than most other nations have. 
then some countries have actually lasted themselves. So we can't, oh, just not my mic, not my mic there. But it's it's where do you draw the line on it? That's the question. And I'm not really for or against. I'm just like, yeah, make your own mind up. I, as long as it don't affect me. But but as I've, I mean, I've I've suffered some forms of racism before in the past. I have, believe it or not. I mean, how could you be racist to this face? How could someone give me some bigotry? That's just outrageous. But I remember once at school, some kid, actually, he called me a packy. So I kicked him in the balls. And he goes, oh, what are you doing that for? Ah, he just called me a racist word. <laughs> then he went and cried and snitched on me. And oh, he kicked me in the balls. And the teacher went, Tom, why did you kick him? I go, he called me a packy. And the teacher just looked and went, uh, because it was just an awkward moment. Because it's, I mean, now when I was younger, I was like, oh, what are you going to do? But when I'm now I'm older, I actually find it hilarious because the teacher was like, yeah, we can't condone violence, but he was being racist. Ooh. So the teacher just went, yeah, just, just, just don't do it again. It was brilliant, perfect moment ever. But um, another thing I tend to think back. I, I used to work in a call centre. Um, I used to work in Hinkley in Leicester. and In Leicestershire, I should say. And now, people think, Leicester, very multicultural. Very multicultural. Loads of different ethnic people living together. Oh, hello. Oh, you're ethnic. I'm ethnic. Let's dance. Oh, how lovely. You know, all that. Leicestershire, very different. Well, actually, no, Loughborough's all right. Loughborough's not like that at all. But you go to some places. Go to Hinkley. Hinkley. Oh, I even talk about this on stage. I don't know if I've mentioned this in my podcast. I just stand up comedy. Hello, please see me on stage when this lockdown is over. But I <laughs> I do stand up comedy. And I do talk about this. I talk about um, racism. Racism? <laughs> racism I've suffered in Hinkley before. And it's just, it was perfect. It was just like, mm, 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 it was beautiful. <laughs> Because, um, and I actually talk, and this, is the, this is a sad truth actually, I talk about this on stage, but this, this actually happened when I was working there. Some person came up to me and they said, Taryn, do you call Indian food, food? Honest to God, that was an actual question. And at the time, I actually, I actually found that quite funny because I thought no one's going to ask me such a stupid ass question. But he looked at me like... Well, do you? <laughs> and it was just, it was weird. It was like, how, how could you ask such a strange question? And that same dude, he actually said to me, he goes, because he was talking about other members of staff, and he goes, oh, until I met this person, I'm not going to give names out because they might get upset. And I'm not here to upset people. I'm just here to piss them off. But he, he said, oh, and until I met some Asians, I, you know, I didn't really think much of them. I thought, like, you know, they're probably... You know, I didn't really think highly of them, but then I met um, uh, met this Asian person. I thought, you know what? They are really good people. They're really cool. And I thought, why did you have to meet one of us to think we were cool? Why didn't you just think we're nice people anyway? Why did you have to wait till you met one of us? And then one of the excuses he said, um, because he asked me some stupid questions, like he'd say, do you eat curry every day? And these are genuine questions. And then he'd say to me, oh, well, I grew up, um, we didn't have many Asians, so it's just some of the questions I ask. And I'm like, well, where I grow up, there's not many Mexicans. But I'm not going to, if I meet a Mexican, say, oh, do you eat tacos every day? You know, it's just, <laughs> some of the people, and they thrive on their ignorance. They literally thrive off it. And this one girl, and this was only about, I think it's about five, six years ago, that this happened. She was talking, and she was saying like, and again, I talk about this on stage, I talk about this on stage. So anything I've said here, I've said it on stage. So just go with it. She said, so like, she was like, sign me and my mates here. We're like, well bored. So we thought we'd just go down to the packy shop. What? And I said, that is racist. She goes, oh, no, it's not. I go, yes, it is. That is a racist word. You can't go around saying that. You can't just say that and think, oh, I'll get away with this. Oh, yeah, lovely. But it's just, and... The thing is, though, it's, we try to, and a lot of them, they, let's face it, most people I work with there, they all voted Brexit, so we, it's, it's nutshell that one. But it's, but it, I'm trying to think what I'm going to say now. A lot of them, 
they didn't really think about how it affects. But the thing is, I think sometimes some people, they try too hard to help the situation, but they don't realise that they could actually cause a hindrance. It's like, I know in America a few years ago, I actually watched this documentary on Netflix, actually. It's quite interesting. I'd recommend everyone to watch it. It's called The Rachel Divide, and it's about uh, Rachel Dillazol. I think I'm saying her surname right, Dillazol. Or Dolazel? Dolazel. I'm going to say Dillazol. Rachel. But <laughs> what she... Those of you who don't know who she is, people in England might not know who she is. She is a... She was born a Caucasian woman, but she identifies as a black woman. Now, that's fine. <laughs> uh, that's cool, if you want to do that. But I think one of the issues she had... I mean, people at first thought this is just fucking weird. You know, what, you know... But she, at first, they, I think there was this interview where she was shown a picture of this, um, this prominent black figure in the community. And she said, that's her dad. And then they found out later on that, no, this ain't your dad. Your parents are white. And I think if she just straight up said, I'm white, but I identify as black, people would have been like, yeah, you're weird. She, either way, it's not going to end well for her. But they would have been like, you're, you're weird. Why? Who? You can't just change your race because you feel like identifying as another race. That's just weird. But the fact she lied and pretended she was black. Well, I, well I, this is the weird thing. I say, I've said pretended. In her mind, she really is black. And this is what caused the uproar. And there was one point in the... Um, documentary she was being interviewed and she says oh that's because I see race as a social construct it's it's a social construct is it the only the thing is it's very easy for someone who's not born of an ethnic um minority to say that it's that race is a social construct because you're not part of this construct you've not suffered racism in the past you've not suffered the issues that an ethnic minority suffers from. I've suffered racism. I'll just give you examples of my racism I've suffered. I remember when I was like um, 13, 14 years old, hanging out with my mates. Some truck drove past us and some guy shouted out, Oi, is your dad a terrorist? You know, <laughs> it's just, race isn't a social construct. What the construct is, is how people respond to race. How they respond to different cultures. How they respond to different religions. That's where the construct comes in. I mean, this ain't in construction. My skin colour is not construction. This is biology. Born with it. Pigmentation. That's how it works. So, it's, but what it is, it's the construct of... Oh, sorry, I just got a notification down there. And I just noticed it. But it's the construct is more how people respond to it. And this is what it comes down to. And so that's why when I hear like things like that, I'm just like, oh, what are you on about? But it's just, this is why it's, we've come to a point now, hopefully in human history, where we can see beyond these racial issues and racial divides. And some people say to me, like, look, I don't see colour. Yeah, you do. Stop talking shit. I'm a different skin colour to you. I'm not asking you to say you don't see colour, I'm just asking you to say you accept different um, ethnic breeds. But, one thing that does happen, and this is something that happens quite a lot in the media, is they try to change the narrative. Um, what they do. Now, we've seen this a lot recently, with the riots and everything. What the media tried to do and it didn't work out this time actually and funnily enough it was the BBC that actually pulled up on this and actually said and actually put a halt to it on their own program the BBC actually made a point of it there was a focus on the looting to divert away from the issues that were being proposed by the protests what the what the protests were actually going for but they were trying to focus on the looting and the violence to try and sway the narrative over there. So I remember once, Benedict Cumberbatch, he was on The One Show, I think, and he was talking about um, having ethnic minorities in acting. He was saying there's not enough 
ethnic uh, minorities, not enough inclusion in acting in TV and in theatre. So there should be more. I've done some stuff in theatre and a lot of us there. I mean, I, I, I played Spot the Brown person when I was working in theatre once. Did end, ended up looking in the mirror. That's all I saw. But, but in a way, I actually kind of liked it because it made me feel special. But <laughs> he... He was talking about it, and he said, um, then, he was saying, he was, the thing he was saying was about more ethnic minority than ever. He was making some very good points, very strong points. Then he said something naughty. He said, it would be good to see more coloured actors in the media. Problem with that is, he said the word coloured. What he was meant to say was people of colour. Now, People like me just saw past and went, okay, he's still making the point. But what the media did, they picked up and went, ha, whoo, thank God for that. He said coloured. Ah, fuck that guy. He said coloured. Oh, we got him. Got him. And they used that little narrative and just pushed that. They said, Benedict Comeback said the word coloured. Very outdated term. Racist. Now we're moving that away. And what they did, they focused on that point to change the narrative, to divert away from what he was actually saying. And this is what they call changing the narrative. That's what it comes down to. And the media has been known for doing that. And but they don't do it in just thing is so they don't do it in just race. They do it in all different forms. So you just have to um, what we have to push for is a change in these things and change in the narrative. The fact that you know I do actually worry sometimes when I do go to some parts of the country. You know, will my skin colour become a hindrance to me? And it's kind of a, a sad thought. I mean, I mean, but there's sometimes, this is why I love, I love to do stand-up, because then I have power over that. I have strength over the racism. I can then say, I can make jokes about race. Then I can make fun of the racists. This is why I love doing stand-up. But it's like once I was doing, I did stand-up in, I think it was Corby, and um, after my set, I was sitting down and I was watching my mate um, doing his set. And he was doing a fantastic set. And then he would mention um, ethnic minorities. And this dude sitting next to me, um, middle-aged white dude, just kept nodding me. Oi, 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 watch this. Oi, oi, oi. He's talking about brown people. Oi, 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 oi. You might like this one. You might like this one. Oi, 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 oi. I was like, shut the fuck up. Let me enjoy the joke. I don't need your commentary on it. And then just, my mate would say another joke. He'd be like, oi, 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 another one, another one. Oi, 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 oi. I was like, fuck off. And it's like I did one gig. And my colleague, uh, a comedian, uh, um, Brian, he did, a, uh, he did a set. And he did a fantastic set and everything. And then I was on later on in the show. But he did a very good set. And then later on, we're all chatting. And this woman just comes up to me randomly. She goes, I just want to say. Um, and by the way, Brian's brown for the fact. <laughs> just for this just so you know, he's actually brown. He's Indian like me. Even though he's got a name like Brian, but whatever. But he does his set. After that, this white woman comes up to me and says, I just want to say, well done. You were absolutely brilliant up there. And I was like, what the fuck are you going on about? She was like, you were brilliant. I just want to shake your hand. I was like, she thought I was Brian. Because brown, he's brown. We must be the same guy. So... What is this nonsense? I and I couldn't help but laugh at that. It was it was so stupidly racist that it was actually quite hilarious. But <laughs> it's just one of those things. It's one of those things, really. Um, yeah, and if you watch old seventies TV shows, racism to them, they didn't see it as racist. They saw it as funny. And I, I think sometimes to take power over a situation, it is good to make fun of it. But what the thing is to do is to make fun of the racist, not make fun of the victim. But it's where do you draw that line? Where It is a very fine line to where you draw on it. But anyway, I could go on further with this, but I'm going on for half an hour now. This is a very long podcast. I actually swore I was not going to do any really long podcasts on my own. I was going to do stuff with other people. But, sod it. I might do a sketch next. I haven't done any sketches in a while. 
But yeah, I just thought I'd have my little say on the whole thing that's been going on. I probably didn't say much use, anything. But it's... But one thing I would say. When I did... When we went to the march on Saturday for Black Lives Matter, we did the kneel. And the kneel was to be um, symbolic of the police officer who knelt on George Floyd's neck. And there's another thing. This one friend of mine, she posted about the kneel and everything. And this girl just commented on saying, I think it's a bit ironic that you got white people kneeling. Don't you think it's disrespectful? I'm like, no, it's a symbol, you stupid woman. And I was like, it's a symbol. You know, Jesus died on a cross. We don't have, you know, and you walk around with crucifixes around. You know, that's not, that's not to take the piss out of Jesus. It's a symbol. So it's just, this is what this is. It's a symbol, it's a symbolic moment. And when we did it for the nine minutes, you realise just how long nine minutes actually is. It is, it is very, very difficultly long. And it was pure silence. And you felt it. You actually felt that um, moment in time there. And it was a very poignant very poignant moment there and um it's something i'm very glad that i did and i'm glad to have been a part of it so if you do see any protests going on go support them but of course be safe keep your distances you know because you know make sure you got your math faces covered and sanitizing all that lot make sure you do all that but do go support them because it's a bigger issue it's a bigger issue than some people might think it is but anyway I've been Taron Chelly. This has been TOC, Total Obvious Comedy. I might have a drink of water before I go. I was going to do that. One thing I was going to do is just like, just drink water for the rest of this um, podcast. But I thought, I can't edit that out. That's just weird. Um, yes, so that's me done for today. I um, hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, please, I'm trying to build up this uh, channel. I'm trying to get it bigger and stronger. I didn't really want to talk about serious stuff on this channel, on Total Obvious Comedy. This is meant to be a light-hearted channel, not taking itself too seriously, or anything like that. But I did feel like I wanted to say something. It's, it's something that I do feel strongly about, and it's something that I thought... I didn't really plan much of this. I'm not even going to edit this podcast. I'm going to keep it completely raw, completely real... Everything that has been said is going to be there. All the little crap stops is going to be in there. And this ain't due to pure laziness. It's just I want to I want you to feel how real this is to people like myself. And what we have suffered. I mean, my family have suffered in the past from racism. I've suffered racism. And I know people who are very close to me have suffered from it. It's a horrible, nasty thing. You know, it's... And it's not a problem from the past, it's continued on to this day. And it's something that hopefully will end soon. Okay. Alright, well, I've been Taron Shelley for Total Obvious Comedy, TOC. That's going to, I was going to say TOC from now on. I've been Taron Shelley for TOC. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Please like, subscribe, please listen to more. Please share the videos, share the audio, share everything. And I will see you guys soon. Alright, you guys take care of yourselves. Stay safe and stay sexy. All right, take care. Bye-bye.